the way to do this is, is to be your own customer. So you should walk through your site and try to break it. The, the traffic that you're driving from Google is really, really, really expensive water. And you're pouring into this bucket and you have no idea where the leaks are. That's a catastrophic error. Like try to figure out all the ways that you might frustrate a customer. My important note here, and I actually kind of feel this way about all things management. Quality assurance. John referenced this already, but this is an important thing to bake into your systems. So we gave you our checklist, which everybody should have now. Uh, in our checklist, we're checking conversion tracking once a month at an absolute minimum. If you have a higher spend, we check more often. Um, the way to do this is, is to be your own customer. So you should walk through your site and try to break it. Try to think of all the things that somebody might do. Like if I started on mobile and moved over to desktop, what happens? Um, if I'm, you know, meaning I'm logged in, I put something in my cart and then I leave, is the session ID maintaining? Uh, if I'm, you know, leaving, coming back, breaking things, whatever, like try to figure out all the ways that you might frustrate a customer uh, and make an actual purchase. This is something else that surprised me when we ran the first 3X Shopify challenge, how few people had bought from themselves on their own site. Because there's that's that's the key thing. So go spend the ten bucks or whatever it's going to take. You know, create a dummy product for yourself if you need to, but go all the way through um, to product completion. And then once you've done that, go hire somebody else to do it. Uh, you know, if it needs to be mom, that's okay. But there's actually people that will do this for you. There are people on Fiverr that for five dollars will walk through your site and uh, give you advice, uh, improvement opportunities. And you know what? Even if you don't agree with any of it. It's a good recorded video to, that you get to see how somebody else engages with your site. And this is somebody who's completely fresh and knows nothing. So make sure that you're doing a little internal QA. Once you've exhausted that, go do a little external QA. I don't like using the same person for my exter external QA because they've already seen the site. So every subsequent time, they're sort of indoctrinated. Um, my important note here, and I, I actually kind of feel this way about all things management, offer goals, not guidance. You don't want to tell somebody how to do something. They're no longer a quality assurance person for you. Now they're just chalking off check checklist. Just say, hey, you know, I'd love to see what would happen if you wanted to build, let's say that you've got a, a site that sells camping gear and you're like, you're going camping, you're going to Yellowstone, you need everything that you, you're, you would need to go camping, build that shopping cart. And now you get to see the way that they approach that, how they're doing their product research and reviews, how it is that they're building the shopping cart, what they're looking at, you know, where they go to look for promo codes, that type of thing. Offer goals, not guidance. Um, tell them where you want them to go, but don't tell them how to get there. Any input on that, John? No, I think that's a good idea. It's um, it, it's it's so overlooked too. We've we and that's part of again part of our SOP. We make a test purchase with every new client to make sure that a obviously converting track and working, but b there's not, you know, some oddity where it's like hey, unless you have you know a one before the phone number, it just won't take your phone number. I mean, little things like that that just upset a user because you know they might have you know three kids running around and and someone's trying to come to the front door and they're trying to order something, and if one of those fields doesn't work, then they just leave. So. Yeah, it's just always a always a great idea to to test to see if I was half paying attention, could I do this? Because we surprised about that. Let test. <laughs> if I was half paying attention, could I do this? Mm -hmm. Dude, that's brilliant. Yeah, because that's exactly what's happening. They're kind of like they're sort of there. I always get like you know the, some of the themes come preloaded with uh, international settings. If you're only selling in one country, get rid of those settings. It's so annoying to find United States. You know. 50% of the way down the drop down, or like John said, like, <laughs> is it plus one? Or if you're in a different country, make sure, or even a small collection of countries, you can typically narrow down on those options mm -hmm. um, and just make little tiny micro improvements to make it a little bit easier. Go look at your competitors. And this doesn't have to necessarily be somebody that sells the exact thing that you're selling. It can be like an analogous product to yours, but figure out what they're doing. Like, what have they done? And then try to reverse engineer why. And oftentimes, it, just asking yourself that question yields really phenomenal results. Like, why would it be this way? What is it that they've figured out that they haven't figured out? Um, sometimes it ends up being kind of a functional difference. You'll notice that competitors have built in, you know, um, product options or imagery just because it's easier for them to scale. Uh, one thing I see in the e-com space a lot is it's the same image and then they use Photoshop to customize, um, you know, product customization or colors. Mm -hmm. And while that's not my favorite thing in the whole wide world to do, if you have a thousand t-shirts, that's probably a little bit easier than taking a thousand different pictures. Um, so you can kind of inform how it is you plan on approaching things by looking at your competitors. Some notes, um, maybe pro tips. We use, what did we use last, Lucky Orange? Yeah. Yeah, so this is a uh, screen recording software. And you can install software on your site, full disclosure, it might slow down your site, uh, but you can install software on your site and you can actually 
track from a heat map perspective where people's cursor goes. And you can also see what they do both on desktop and on mobile. This is amazing, especially for new e-commerce sites. If you're driving traffic and people aren't converting, you get to figure out why. And what you'll see is we saw this on our site. People were clicking on things that they thought were clickable that ended up not going anywhere. And they were trying to take action. You know, it's something that looked like an accordion wasn't an accordion or something that looked like it would have been a hyperlink wasn't a hyperlink. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing that I noticed is we had a, a really, I thought, significantly, we had a piece of content of significant value that was below the threshold at which the majority of our traffic reached on our homepage. And, and it kind of gave us a sense as to how to order some of our content. So I'm pretty sure Hotjar, one of them has a free version. True Conversions owned by Digital Marketer. We're buddies with them. So if you want to use them, that's great. I think they had an AppSumo deal at one point. Um, Lucky I, think, Orange, uh, I think Lucky Orange is like $12 a month. So it's yeah, fairly expensive. expensive. Yeah. Um, I know. Uh, what's that? Hotjar is free one. Hotjar yeah, Hotjar is free. Yeah. I like Lucky Orange just because I think uh, what's, what's really cool about it is, um, yeah, it's like $10 a month uh, and you get 25,000 business a month, but you get a live chat. Um, Oh, it's super uh, creepy. Feature. You get to pop it the is, yeah. Out. So you can actually watch people on the site live and wherever they're going, if you want to, you can sit, start chat and you can type in a custom message. So if someone's on like the checkout page and they are like trying to, you know, they're trying to, they're clicking around, you can actually pop up a chat bar and be like, Hey, do you need any help checking out? Like you can actually send people messages and start chatting with them live that I don't see any other, other, um, other tools doing that. That's a heat mapping and screen recording software, but that one's it was, it's pretty cool because you can actually start to chat people and and if they don't engage the chat, even if we'll talk about live chat, you can actually you know ask them a very specific question that you get really good engagement with. And sometimes it's like, yeah, I was I was gonna buy this, but I didn't know A, B, and C. It's like perfect. And instead of waiting for them to come, you can be proactive and go out to them. Hmm. Here's the the analogy that I want to offer everybody. This is not a glitch. I'm interrupting the video you're watching because I want to remind you that we provide done-for-you Google Ads services. We're the number one ranked Google Ads agency on the planet with almost $100 million in ad spend under management. If you're an entrepreneur, business owner, C-level exec, director of marketing, and you're managing your own Google Ads, I think that's a massively inefficient use of your time. As a matter of fact, in my experience, within 90 days, we're able to optimize existing campaigns to a point to where we're paying for ourselves. We move from being a cost center to a profit center, and I want to put my time and my money where my mouth is. If you're spending $10,000 a month or more in Google Ads, I want to offer you a free, no obligation action plan. A high level member of my team, one of our strategists, will look at your account, open the hood, and do a full diagnostic and explain everything that we would recommend that you change in order to optimize your campaigns. You can take that, do it yourself, you can hand it to an internal member of your team, or in an ideal world, you can hire us. I'd love the opportunity to, to earn your business. Please go to sol8.com. That's sol, the number eight.com. Request your free action plan. Until then, back to your regularly scheduled program. Um, this was given to me by Ryan Dice. Uh, Ryan says that digital marketing, specifically traffic driving, is pouring water into a leaky bucket. And the leakier bucket, the less effective your marketing. The more you're able to shore up your bucket, the more effective your marketing becomes. Um, what this type of software does is it allows you to diagnose where those leaks are. And so it's frustrating. It's actually a really good visual. The, the traffic that you're driving from Google is really, really, really expensive water. And you're pouring into this bucket and you have no idea where the leaks are. That's a catastrophic error. Not being able to see where your bucket is leaking from, that's just a recipe for disaster. And you're basically, you're, you're hemorrhaging money and you're doing it intentionally. So putting yourself in a position, and you do that with things like Google Analytics, uh, screen recording software, record reports are necessary, you know, data analysis tools that let you see where your leaks exist. And then you get to go plug the leaks. Sometimes you'll mis misdiagnose. That's okay. That's going to be par for the course, but I'd rather see you taking action than just, you know, pouring a bunch of water into a leaky bucket. Most of the clients that come to our, that come to solutions eight that are already running Google ads. I can't say most, a really, a really large percentage of them though, um, they think they just need to spend more money or improve their Google ads, but really what they need to do is they need to shore up their bucket. And sometimes one or two really basic changes makes us look like rock stars because all of a sudden the efficacy of the campaign doubled, but you know, we just made sure that like, you're not, we're, we're capitalizing on everything that you're already sending to the campaign. Michael's asking, do you typically uh, only leave it installed for a limited time to diagnose issues or leave it permanently? It's always been for us a diagnostic utility. Like we added Lucky Orange to ourselves. And I think we removed it within 90 days once we were fully converted. 
Um, yeah, a lot of times it's for for specific testing. So yeah. if you have like a new product, or if you have um, is, this is now we used it for lead generation. So we wanted to see well, we put our pricing on the page, but it was at you know about sixty percent down the page. We found out that sixty five percent of the traffic only makes it fifty percent down the page. Um, you know, then now we're we're missing our pricing. So half the people that are coming to our website are asking what the price is, and when it's on the homepage, we're like, why isn't why are people not knowing what the price is? It's on the page. Then we found out that they didn't make it down that far. So thinking like, how would you how would you start to optimize your product pages? Well, what if all of your amazing videos are below your pictures, your price, your descriptions, your social proof, and then all of your amazing videos? And then Lucky Lucky Orange as an example says, well, your your heat map shows that people scroll down. 50% of your traffic only go to here. The other 50% of the traffic go down further. And then it shows like 40, 30, 20, 10. And so you might not see that only 30% of your people uh, that come to your product page aren't seeing your videos. Well, you know, maybe you need to possibly switch to a theme that supports your, um, your image gallery to have a video in the image gallery itself. So this way people can actually see a product demonstration that will, you know, now 70% of the more traffic is seeing your videos. So things like that. Or if you see that, you know, your uh, banding cart rate is 85% and you're like, why are, why is my banding cart rate 15% higher than the average? Well, using those type of screen recording software, you can see that when they go through the checkout, there might be issues there that happen. Um, people might always, you know, end up, you know, hitting a, hitting a, an email one. And for whatever reason, that one just always shows an error on that page. Um, on a, and what's nice about it is the one another, another reason why I like Lucky Orange better is it shows you the device, the operating system, and the uh, I think that's it's something else. I forget exactly where what it is. Um, yeah, device OS browser. Yeah, but if it's like, hey, we noticed that the um, people go to you know six pages on average and stay the longest, but don't ever buy uh, when they're on an Apple um, uh, Safari. But on on Apple and Chrome, it has a great a great conversion rate. Well, maybe your your checkout page has an issue with that with that brow uh, with that um, browser on that specific device. So it's it's really good for diagnosing. Um, you can always run it kind of right in the beginning and just say, hey, is there anything there that I might not have known? Um, and just watch people make their purchases and say, yep, this looks good, everything's fine. And then you can remove it. But um, it's really good to, to if you ever said, man, I really would like to know what people are doing on my site, that's 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 the tool to use. Yeah, I was trying to get into our old dashboard, but it's disabled when we canceled. Yeah. Um, there's another quote from Ryan who y'all will forgive me. I'm just a, such a fanboy, uh, So I'm going to quote him a lot, but he says that um, prescription without diagnosis is malpractice. And that's really worth taking into consideration when you're doing this type of task prescription without diagnosis is malpractice because, and I've done this myself. The classic example is you send an email, the open rate is abysmal. So you rewrite the email. Nobody saw the damn email, rewrite the subject line and send it again. But we, we tend to go towards optimizing the thing that, that we feel is important instead of paying attention to what it is that the customer feels important. I think John's example is phenomenal. If your media isn't prioritized on the page, then don't recreate the media, just change the page layout, those types of things. Um, so make sure that you get a, a prescription before you diagnose. And the way to do that is, is software tools like this. I want to talk about the big three. These are the three things that, that th this is dead on arrival. And uh, this is why, you know, like we, we bat people away if they have these issues. The very first one is it's a big broad bucket and it's not fair of me, but I just, it's hard to put everything in it. If your website is broken, don't drive traffic to it. That sounds like an obvious thing to say, 